All right, Algebra 1, we are in Lesson 2 of Unit 3, Recursive Formulas for Sequences. So we've got some new vocabulary words that we're going to learn. Um, today's is recursive. Um, in the meantime, let's remember a little bit what we did about writing explicit formulas. We did that last lesson explicit formulas, we would find a sequence, we would be given a sequence, um, like 2, 4, 6, 8, and we would have to write an explicit formula for it. And I believe what we would do is write f of n, which is a function, 2 to the n power, where we'd start with n equals 1. So every time, if I wanted to find out what the tenth um, tenth term was, I would evaluate my function at 10, and then 2 to the tenth power, which is some number. <laughs> so let's look. Um, lesson 1, we did explicit formulas for sequences, which I just talked about. So we um, relate each term in a sequence directly to its placement in the sequence. We don't necessarily have to know what was prior to each term, what happened before it, we can just go directly to the, the spot, directly to the term um, in the sequence. And that is an explicit formula, just like I did in the previous slide. This formula allows us to jump to any term of the sequence by simply replacing n with a specific number and evaluating the expression that describes the nth term of the sequence. Today, recursive formulas which is a little bit different. So first of all, jumping right into classwork. Consider Achilles, 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 I don't know. We're gonna say Achilles. Sequence, five, eight, 11, 14, 17. If you believed in patterns, what might you say the next number in the sequence? Well, it looks like I'm doing a plus three. So I would say, the next term would be 20 because it's plus 3 each time. Um, write a formula for Achilles' sequence. Well, here's another way to look at it. I'm starting with the number 5. Then I've got the number 8, which is 5 plus 3. Then I've got the number 11, which is... 5 plus 3 plus 3, or I could say that is 5 plus 2 times 3. I'm actually going to move this over here. <laughs> then what's my next number? 14, which is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, or I can change that into 5 plus 3 times 3. And then the number 17, keep on going, right? I'm trying to form a pattern for you to, to help figure out the formula. That equals 5 times 4 times 3. You see a pattern yet? So what I really have for a formula here, I'm going to use a sub n this time, or a of n, not a sub n. It's another function notation. This one is just a of n. So we're going to call this one Abby. Remember yesterday we called it Frank. Today we're going to call it Abby. I've got 5 plus 3 times. Let's see. If this is the first term, I want it to be 5 plus 3 times 0. And this one I want to have 5 times, sorry, 5 plus Let's see, I'm trying to get it to look exactly the same. 0 times 3, where this one would be 1 times 3, 2 times 3, 3 times 3, 4 times 3. This is the first term, that's the second term, the third term, the fourth term, and the fifth term. Notice the fifth term is 4 times 3, the fourth term is 3 times 3 third term is 2 times 3. The second term is 1 times 3. So 
what I really need here is n minus 1. So I start out with a 5, and then I it's a plus 3, but it's a plus 3 times n minus 1, right? Cool. This n right here means the nth term of the sequence. Yep. All right, explain how each part of the formula relates to the sequence. So that just means to find each term in the sequence, you are adding three. One less time than the term number. So to get the fifth term, you're going to add three four times, right? Very cool. All right, Achilles formula is an explicit formula. That right there is explicit. Because I can jump in at any point of the problem. So there's this guy named Johnny. We always like Johnny. Johnny makes us laugh. He's a good guy. Um, so when Johnny saw the sequence, he wrote the following. A of n plus 1 equals A of n plus 3. When n is greater than or equal to 1, and the first term is a five. What in the world does a of n plus one mean? If we look at the sequence again, I'm gonna write it down, hold on. We really have it as five, eight equals five plus three, 11 equals eight plus three, 14 equals 11 plus 3, and 17 equals 14 plus 3. It's always the previous number plus 3. So if we have, <clears throat> this would be a of 2, a of 3, a of 4, an A of 5. What A of 2 really is, is A of 1 plus 3. What A of 3 really is, is A of 2 plus 3. Look at that. A of 2. A of 2 plus 3. What A of 4 really is, is the previous term plus 3. The previous term plus 3. Okay, this is called a recursive, or sorry, yes, a recursive formula. So that's the fifth term. The fifth term is equal to the fourth term plus 3. The fourth term is equal to the third term plus 3, etc. So with this type of formula, um, you don't know, if I wanted to figure out what the, um, what the tenth term was, I would have to first have to calculate, I said have to a lot, didn't I? I would first have to calculate the ninth term and then add three to it. Recursive formula. So to answer that question, which is part D, Johnny's formula is saying to find any term in the sequence, just add 3 to the term before it. Like I said earlier, um, if I want to find, I don't know, the 50th term, I would have to take the 49th term and add 3. Okay, it's critical, critical that the value for the very first term be specified. We said a, sub, a of 1 equals 5 because we have to get it started. We need to start somewhere. Okay, 
Akelia, in a playful mood, asked Johnny, what would happen if we change the plus sign in your formula to a minus sign? Okay, let's do those first. So what sequence does an A of N plus 1 equals A of N minus 3 generate? Okay, what does that mean? Here we just see that each term is 3 less than the term before it. So we're going to start with the first term, the second term, if I can subtract... I'm doing a minus three, the third term, the fourth term, dot, dot, dot. What sequence does A of N plus one equals A of N times three um, generate? Well, we start out with the first term, times three, times three, times three, dot, dot, dot. Ooh. What does the sequence a of n plus 1 equals a of n divide by 3? n is greater than 1, you start with a 5. So the first term, the second term, the third term, and the fourth term, dot, dot, dot. Cool. Then made up a recursive formula. Recursive means we have to know the term before whatever term we're looking for. Ben made up a recursive formula and used it to generate a sequence. He used b of n to stand for the nth term of his recursive sequence. We're still in function notation. Yesterday we talked about Frank. So far today we've talked about Abby and now we're talking about Ben, right? All right, so b of n stands for the nth term. So what does b of 3 mean? That would be the third term in the sequence. b of m? Well, I don't know. b of m would be the nth term. No idea what that would be, right? Okay, so if b of n plus 1 equals 33 and b of n equals 28, write a possible recursive formula involving n plus 1 and n that would generate 28 and 33 in the sequence. Let's see, that looks like a plus 5. So if I want b of n plus 1, that would be the first term plus 5. Okay, that would be b of n plus 1. You know, I could also, which is not to confuse you, I could start out with b of n. Um, if this is the term we want, this one is 1 less, b of n plus 1. b of n is 1 less. So if b of n is the term we're looking for, we would need the 1 less. So that would be n minus 1. See that? Plus 5. Um, yeah, either one is possible. This is what we've been sort of doing today, right? Cool. So what does 2 b of 7 plus 6 mean? That would be 2 times the seventh term plus 6. 2 times, let's do that, sorry I shouldn't have erased all that, 2 times the seventh term of the sequence, yeah, plus 6, that's what I had written before. How about b of n plus b of m? That would just be the nth term plus the mth <laughs> term. Would it necessarily be the same uh, as b of n plus m? Uh, no. Because b of n plus m 
is really your function evaluated at the nth plus the mth term. You have to add those terms together and then evaluate the function. So no. And then what does b of 17 minus b of 16 mean? Well, that's your 17th term minus your 16th term. Example two, consider a sequence given by the formula um, a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 minus 5, where a sub 1 is 12, and n has to be greater than or equal to 2. List the first five terms of the sequence. Well, the first term's easy. It's 12. The second term would be 12 minus 5, minus 5, minus 5, and minus 5. Okay? Now, this is a recursive formula. You have to know the previous term before you can solve for the current one. So we really like explicit formulas because I can solve it for any um, term I want. So if this is recursive, I really want to solve it or to turn it into an um, explicit one. And this is where it can get a little bit confusing. But if you remember, we have the first term is 12. The second term was... 7, which is 12 minus 5, or we're going to say 1 times 5. The next term is 2, which is 12 minus 2 times 5. The next term is negative 3, which is 12 minus 3 times 5. You get the picture? 12 minus 4 times 5. Now, if this is the first term, that's the second term, third term, fourth term, etc. Oops. I put parentheses around the wrong thing. That helps me write an explicit formula. So I'm going to do a sub n is 12 minus 5 times n minus 1. And n has to be greater than or equal to 1. And then find the sixth term. So a sub 6 is 12 minus 5 times 5, which is 25. 12 minus 25 is negative 13. And then a sub 100. 12 minus 5 times 99, which is negative 483. Cool. All right. One of the most famous sequences is the Fibonacci sequence. If we were doing our math fair this year, um, we could mess with the Fibonacci sequence, which is totally fun. Um, the Fibonacci sequence says that a term is the previous two terms added together. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, etc., etc., etc. Um, the sequence can be written in function notation, like that. f of n plus 1 is f of n plus f of n minus 1. That is a recursive formula. So how is each term of the sequence generated? I just said <laughs> by adding the two preceding terms. Um, each sequence below gives an explicit formula. Write the first five terms of each sequence and then write a recursive formula for the sequence. First five terms is sort of simple. Um, a sub n, so our first term is going to be just plugging in 1, so 2 times 1 is 2, plus 10 is 12, plus 2 is 14, and then 16 18 and 20. So my first term, my second term, so I'd have 4 plus 10, third term, 6 plus 10, fourth term, um, 8 plus 10, 10 plus 10. Now for the hard part. Um, 
writing a recursive sequence. So those, we would start with, I always do n plus one, is my previous term plus two for this one. Then I have to say what my first term is. Then n is going to be greater than or equal to one. So not bad, it's a plus two pattern. Um, we can do that. With this next one, I'm gonna write my first five terms. So n equals one. If I do one minus one is zero. So anything raised to the zero power is one. Two minus one is one. Um, three minus one is two. So one half squared is one half times one half. Um, fourth term is four minus one. So one half to the third power is one half times one half times one half. And then times one half, um, 16. And the recursive formula. I have a to the n plus one equals um, the term previous to that, a sub n. And it looks like each time I am actually dividing by two. And then my first term is of course a one, it's right there. And n has to be greater than or equal to one. All right, number five. For each sequence, write either an explicit or a recursive formula. Whichever one you like the best. Um, let's see, it looks like here we're just going positive, negative one, positive, negative one. Um, so I really like explicit formulas better. I think they're more useful. So if I'm first gonna start with a, it really doesn't matter. I know anything raised to the zero power is one, so I can raise the negative one to the zero power. I would just need n minus one there, where if I start with a one, so one minus one is zero, negative one raised to the zero power is one. That's for my first term. Second term, two minus one is one, Negative one raised to the first power is in fact negative one, etc. Let's see, what are we doing here with part B? It looks like my numerator is increasing by one. And it's almost like that's the term. For the first term, my numerator is a one. For my second term, my numerator is a two. Third term, a three, etc. But the denominator, it looks like it would be um, n plus 1. Does that look right? Yeah, it does. n plus 1. n plus 1. Cool, we've got our formula. f of n equals n over n plus 1, where n has to be greater than or equal to 1. That was a little harder to figure out. You got it though. All right, that's it. Let's remember what a recursive sequence is. Um, recursive is defined by specifying the values of one or more initial terms. Usually we've done just one. And secondly, has a property that the remaining term satisfy a recursive formula. Um, describes the value of a term based upon an expression. But we need to know the previous term to figure it out. That's the key right there. Recursive sequence, I have to know the previous term. Um, an explicit formula is a lot easier because I can just figure out the nth term no matter where I want to start. Um, the recursive formula specifies the nth term as an expression in the previous term. Explicit, it's the nth term, just you can jump in wherever you want to. Cool, good work.